Hello, my name is Ed Frawley. I own Learbird. My wife and I own Learbird. And I've got a good question here. And again, I say this at the beginning of every time I film one of these, and that is this question came to us through our website, through the Ask Cindy portal at the front of the website. You don't need to be a customer to ask a question on training, on behavioral problems, on healthcare, on breeding. If we can answer, we will answer. This is a good one because it deals with problems with leash pressure. And for those that don't understand or know what leash pressure is, if I have my dog standing here and I take a hold of the leash by the dog's neck, and if I put backward pressure on him, I want the dog to back up willingly. Basically, it's a way of moving your dog around. It's a very, very valuable skill to teach a dog, not only for when you go to the vet, uh, it plays into being able, with additional training, to take the dog's collar and move the dog around by his collar. For example, when people come to your house and you don't want your dog jumping up, you can go grab him by the collar and move him away. Or if you have a reactive dog, you can grab that dog, hopefully, by the collar and you've done enough training a million times and you can move that dog away and redirect him someplace else. All of these things, leash pressure, collar grabs, working under distractions, yada, 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 they all play into one another. But learning leash pressure, it's not a simple thing to do. And I, first I'll read the question because it's such a common question. This person says, hello, I'm working my way through Michael Ellis's, Michael Ellis's focused healing video. And I've gotten to the part where I work on leash pressure with my Malinois. He's awesome with the forward leash pressure and immediately gives when I move him forward. When I pull back to attempt to get him to, to move backwards, he constantly drops into a sit position. If I keep applying pressure backwards, he drops to the ground and lays down. What can I do to help him learn what I'm asking him to do? Should I just keep applying steady pressure backwards? I'm using a slip lead. Thanks for your help. Well, it goes right back to the fact that teaching leash pressure is, is often not easy. You need to be a perfectionist in how you do this. And Cindy and I, even though we've been doing it for a zillion years, it seems like, where we really started to see how this can work is when we started leash pressure with our horses. We, have, we now have four horses. We had five and we placed one a year ago. But if you can move a thousand pound animal around with two fingers and just grab them and move them around, you know you're doing something right. And horses, like dogs, are very observant. When you reward them, when you ask them to do something, and you mark that something with a marker, yes, we use yes. New trainers, I tell them, it's like dogs don't think like people do. When you say yes, they take a mental snapshot picture of exactly what they were doing at that point in time, and they think, that's what they want me to do. If you can think of that in terms of your marker training, you're gonna understand a little bit more about um, slight, slight mistakes that can be made when applying leash pressure. Leash pressure has to be, if this was my dog, leash pressure has to be, backwards this is, straight back even with the top of the dog's back. If you pull down a little bit, if, it's not le if you're not pulling level back, if you're just pulling down, the dog thinks, okay, wants me to sit. So, so important. Another thing is this, folk, this lady is using a slip collar. The important thing when you mark the movement, well, first I'll back up and say, a lot of people when they start this, expect too much, too soon, 
from their dog when they start to teach loose leash pressure. They expect the dog to take a step back before they mark it. You don't do that. You don't have to do that. There's an old, there's a saying called successive approximation. What that means is, is that in the beginning of teaching a new behavior, we're gonna give that dog a mark. When it just begins to lean back just a little bit, we'll mark it. You don't need to wait for him to move back a foot or two feet. You only need to lean into the pressure when you're pulling straight back. So you, the dog leans a little bit, you mark it, you reward him. Next time, you mark it and you reward him. I don't care how many times you do it. Maybe you have to do it three times. Maybe you gotta do it 30 times with some dogs that are older dogs that are a little wild or you, you know, it depends upon what the distractions are around them. There shouldn't be any when you're teaching a new behavior. Um, but you're, you're working with the dog you have in front of you. So nobody can give you a set formula on how to train a dog. It all depends on the dog that's sitting right there. And you have to think outside the box about what you're trying to train them. So with the leash pressure thing, sometimes using a slip lead, which is what this person is doing, does not release quick enough. It doesn't release the pressure quick enough. And those people should probably go to uh, one of the really small prong collars, the, I think they're 2.2 millimeter prong collars. This is not about giving a correction, it's about being able that when you're pulling backwards, to release it instantly. And a slip collar often doesn't release it instantly. And another thing that if trainers keep the pressure on the leash too long, in other words, they mark it but they keep the pressure on too long, that will also often cause the dog to sit. So the, the release needs to be a clear release to your dog. You pull back, in the very beginning you get slight movement, slight shift in weight even, you mark it and release it. That's gonna help you go a lot, lot quicker into your training. Once the dog gets it, then they understand. And there's so many, as I said in the beginning of this, there's so many applications about getting a dog to understand leash pressure. I mean, at the vet, uh, when you're out for walks, uh, there's a million different applications. And you can teach it at a very, very young age if you do it motivationally. So again, <laughs> this lady wrote back the next day and she said, oh my God, that worked perfectly. I paid way more attention to be sure that I was not pulling up and all I was doing was pulling straight back and I rewarded them as soon as I saw the paw start to move. And on a side note here, it doesn't need to even be your paw moving. It can just be your dog leaning back into that. And then the next step after it leans back into it is maybe reward when a paw even moves. She said, by the end of the first training session, my dog was already taking one, sto one step backwards. So this worked for her. She said, I absolutely love it. I can't wait to make more and more progress. So. If you want more information on leash pressure, we have very good online courses on it. You can go and look into some of the videos that we did, not videos, some of the online courses that we did with Michael Ellis, our friend, and there's a lot to be learned, and we break it down into small, small, little pieces, because that's what dog training is all about. Training the little pieces, one step at a time, then putting them all together to form a behavior or perform an exercise.